This is Chippy from Ultrabook News and Happy New Year 2012, January the 3rd and I've got the Samsung MP350 here right now. Last two months of last year I was testing Ultrabooks pretty heavily, tested about four or five of them uh, for ultrabooknews.com with a view to buying one myself for CES reporting starting in January, next Monday, stay tuned for that. Um, but I've actually ended up with the Samsung MP350 which is not an Ultrabook uh, but it is very Ultrabook like and actually a very good value device as well and in fact for anyone that's looking to step up from netbooks over across to a higher power device without really losing the sort of price advantages of a netbook or um, the weight as well and this one's 1.4 kilograms and priced in the UK £429 I think I paid for it at Amazon.co.uk which is a really good price and around half the UK price of an Ultrabook so with 4 gigabytes of RAM 600 gig hard drive of course not SSD mount screen very similar sort of uh, specs to Ultrabook but I've had it for a couple of weeks and in this video I want to give you a look around the device and uh, tell you a bit about the, the features and what I think about the features, the uh, good points, the bad points and how it compares with, with Ultrabooks as well. So here we are, MP350. A very quick unboxing for you uh, to talk about some of the specs. Uh, basic packaging here really indicates that this is kind of a value product. It doesn't compare at all to the unboxing experience you get on the Samsung Series 9 devices and in fact many of the Ultrabooks, although the Acer Aspire S3 had some fairly basic packaging as well. Just quickly in the box though, show you what you've got here. Uh, manuals, we've actually got a recovery uh, media disc as well, so that's kind of interesting, especially considering there's a 600 gig uh, drive on, on the MP350, which already has a, a recovery partition in it. Here's a VGA adapter. Um, so it is a true VGA output on the device, but they have a very small uh, connector, same as actually the um, Samsung Series 9 devices, and there's the v VGA adapter there, and a fairly standard 19 volt Samsung uh, power unit and cable. So nothing special there, and as I said, fairly basic uh, packaging. So the Samsung MP350 is a Core i3 based device. Um, Nominal 2.2 gigahertz and of course speed stepping brings that down to 800. So you've got very similar CPU clock rate range as you get on uh, Ultrabooks, which run nominal 1.6 but have the 800 gigahertz uh, sort of power saving mode and the 2.3 gigahertz to 2.8 in some cases. Uh, turbo boost so in terms of CPU performance very very similar but it's a mobile CPU in here which means once you start getting up to higher clock rates it uses a lot more energy than uh, a ULV processor that you'll find on an Ultrabook and in fact in some tests I've done I've seen up to 40 percent more uh, power usage not just CPU power usage overall power usage uh, compared to an Ultrabook so ULV CPUs do have some uh, advantages although in sort of average testing, uh, in terms of, of sort of office usage, um, text input, there's really not that much difference. And what Samsung have done here is really done away with a bit of the style, a bit of the thin and light features, some of these special materials that you find on an Ultrabook, and have made it simple. And have managed to cram in, although it's a sealed unit, a 60 watt hour battery. Now that is bigger than any battery I've seen on Ultrabook so far. And when you compare it to the Acer S3, which has a 37 watt hour battery, something like 70% um, more uh, battery capacity. So although you've got a more powerful, uh, sorry, a more power hungry CPU, you've got power capacity. And, and in many scenarios, this will outlast many of the Ultrabooks I've tested as well. So we're looking at the back, you'll see a memory slot here. So it comes with four gigs on this model anyway, and you can go up to eight gigs in there for a very easy uh, change. Uh, there is no way really to uh, access the battery um, but of course you'll be able to undo the back and access the disk and there's one thing I will be doing is looking to swap the hard drive for an SSD at the moment I'm looking at probably a my I think it's my digital SSD or, or a run core pro for something around the 150 180 dollar mark for 128 uh, gigs which should uh, boost the performance uh, nicely on it so let's go around uh, some of the ports and nice a nice feature about this, really, when you compare to some of the Ultrabooks, is it's got all the ports there that you need. Power, 
full Ethernet port with a sort of funny little pull down flap there, which does um, indicate that you know it's fairly thin, a little bit too thin to put a full Ethernet port on there. Haven't really tested that out though, and I'm not sure how it's going to last long term. If that breaks off, the port is probably uh, useless. A full HDMI, USB 2 there, and on the other side you'll see another USB 2, so there's no USB 3.0 on this, although this does have sleep and charge capability. Here's the VGA port, and that's where the adapter comes in, Kensington Lock, and a combo headphone he uh, microphone port, and um, SDHC card slot. So you've got a good range of ports there, nothing on the back, although you've got the... Um, CPU venting on the back. A uh, quick word about that in terms of fan. There is a bigger fan in this. Clearly it's got to cool a 37 watt TDP CPU compared to the 17 watt TDPUs that you get. Uh, sorry, I think it's 34. Anyway, a lot more uh, potential power drain and power usage than the uh, Ultrabooks, which means you need to extract the air, keep it cool bigger fat out but having said that it's quite quiet and there is a silent mode and in general office usage you won't hear the fan and and that compared to something like the Toshiba Z830 which has a very annoying fan buzz is a, is a, is a real advantage and uh, Samsung seems to have done a good job there plastic materials though and and the um, it really doesn't feel you know ultra good quality although I will say it doesn't look that bad from the front anyway You've got a sort of mat, and this may even be a, eh, could be a very well designed plastic actually, I think it's plastic. Uh, it does collect uh, smudge marks, it's not a fingerprint magnet, but if you've got greasy fingers those smudges will stay on there and they're quite difficult to get off. Um, and looking around, you know, it's not the thinnest of devices. Um, and you can see really netbook comparisons, because it's, it's not much bigger than some of the uh, sort of 11.6 inch netbooks and the reason it's not much bigger is if we open it up you'll see that Samsung have got a very very thin bezel screen on this and there's the quick start by the way they do have a quick start feature um, it's only a couple of seconds to get up and running and the network is connected so no disadvantage over the ultrabook there but here look at the bezel it's a 12.5 inch screen 1366 by 768 and what they've managed to do I think is manage to keep the the width down and the depth down by putting the ultra thin uh, bezel in there. So, 1.4 kilos and very much the same sort of size as, as, a, as a larger netbook, a 11.6 inch netbook, something like the Lenovo S205 compares very well to this because the keyboard is, is pretty good on this as well. Chiclet style keyboard, here we've got the UK version, and I'm really enjoying this. It's uh, got access to uh, features as well. Power button on the top right. Okay, small cursor buttons. You're getting uh, a nice uh, full shift uh, button on the right, smaller one on the left, and the um, Elantec, I believe it is, touchpad is, you know, it works. There's nothing uh, special about it, but it's not uh, causing me any problems. And the mouse buttons are fairly reasonable as well. There's no, ex there's no um, heavy click, loud click, um, or extra pressure needed on those than you would expect. So really nice. And actually, the the fascia looks pretty good. Nice that they've done and um, white on black keys, no backlight on the keyboard, but uh, it's a fairly high contrast key set, so that's pretty good as well. Let me just put that back into standby, and you'll see that uh, it's got a matte screen. So, um, for those of you that are a little bit more mobile, you might be interested in the matte screen, but having said that, um, it's not the best screen out there, and certainly compared to the Samsung Series 9, they've clearly used cheaper off-the-shelf parts than they could have done. The Samsung Series 9 has a much brighter, much higher contrast, much more punchy screen uh, that goes to a higher brightness level. This um, is is okay. Now you wouldn't ex I wouldn't expect, wasn't expecting too much on this, um, but viewing angles on the left and right are not too bad. Up and down, it's yeah, getting into sort of cheap display territory there. Um, but really not too bad if you're a single user using it in an office um, just at the outdoor brightness might not be uh, good enough for you um, so I talked about the specs Core i3 2.2 gigahertz we've got 4 gigabytes of RAM in this and a 600 gigabyte spinning hard drive so lots of storage it's split into two partitions in this case um, now you could uh, of course upgrade that to, to an SSD if you needed webcam 
We've got Bluetooth 3 Plus HS on this, plus an Intel Centrino, I think it's 100 series Wi-Fi, which has Wi-Di capability. There's only a one antenna Wi-Fi, but I find the uh, re reception quality to be pretty good on this, and cer certainly as good as some of the better Ultrabooks, and way better than the Samsung Series 9 Ultrabook, that, or Ultrabook Lite device that I tested recently. So that's uh, really, really nice. Speaker volume is okay, nothing special on the speaker volume, um, and there's no major sort of heat build up um, in normal use. Although, when you start to really get it cooking, you get heat build up across the top and the back here, and the fan uh, exhaust comes up across the front. You can actually feel it when you put your hands near the screen, which is um, not so good. So I want to quickly mention battery life, um, now we're idle here, Wi-Fi connected, screen on, uh, showing 6 hours 48 minutes with 97% remaining. Um, this has a huge dynamic range of um, operating modes, you can sit here and type text for a good 7 to 8 hours I would, would say, in fact I've seen, I've done some tests already and um, Seven watt average for sort of typing Wi-Fi on a bit of maybe background streaming um, is going to bring you eight plus hours of uh, of typing capability. Start to use Office apps, etc., and you'll be down to about six hours. But still, that's very very good. The only downside really is that, as I mentioned earlier, you've got a mobile processor here, and when you start to push it really hard, the drain rate goes up really really high. So for gaming. For video converting, you may only get one hour out of this, as it can potentially go to 43, 42, 40 watts of dra power drain, power usage, uh, when you're really, really loading it. About 30 to 35 would be an average if you're really sort of playing a game and, um, and doing some video editing, perhaps, or video rendering. So, bear that in mind. This is classic um, core mobile uh, CPU issue compared to... Uh, core ULV ultra low voltage CPUs that are used in the Ultrabooks. Just one or two things to mention that uh, I forgot there. 1.3 megapixel webcam and um, there is a gigabit ethernet on that ethernet port as well so it's not just a 10100 it's a proper gigabit, gigabit ethernet port so really um, well suited to, to office environments and, and actually I think the performance here would be more than enough for word processing, for email, for web, web type work and for me personally I'll be using it for some video editing and video conversion as well because remember you've got Intel Quick Sync, Quick Sync Video inside here which is hardware encoding, hardware decoding of uh, various video formats it will play 1080p no problem, I was actually using this yesterday in uh, the YouTube uh, lean back mode um, for 1080p videos out to my uh, to my uh, lounge television and it was working very very nicely no hiccups at all applications are quick to start up and there's really no um, issues in terms of uh, web performance at all let's just quickly show you a, uh, a YouTube 1080p that uh, we should be able to pick up fairly quickly um, yeah big buck bunny is your classic and we'll switch that straight to 1080p and we'll go to full screen and that should stream pretty nicely over uh, my local network there and if we just go to CPU usage that is running in around let it settle, let it settle, 25% CPU So that's a quick look around the Samsung MP350, which uh, is not a netbook, it's not an ultrabook, it's really a good light, lightweight, good value laptop, and I'll be using it uh, at least for the next couple of months, perhaps while I wait for information on the next gen ultrabooks that have come out, and the next wave that we'll see at uh, CES next week. Uh, it's not available everywhere, it's available in the UK, I've seen it in Poland, I've seen it available in some of the um, Arab countries, I think Australia, and also in the US, uh, but really different pricing in various areas, uh, for example in the US you get the Core i5 version for I think $600, uh, 
in, in the UK, it's the Core i3 version, it's not available in Germany at all as far as I know. So check out availability uh, in your area, check out the prices and keep a look, at, uh, look out for, um, look out for uh, offers on it because it's really a good value ne uh, notebook and if you're looking to wait till next year, till the next gen of Ultrabooks uh, come out with Ivy Bridge or laptops, um, this will make a great bridge laptop. So, my name is Shippy, ultrabooknews.com is where I'll be reporting more about this and on all Ultrabooks. We'll be at CES next week uh, from Sunday the 8th, news starts and we're tracking Ultrabooks, netbooks, tablets, uh, maybe the odd UMPC too, who knows, but uh, you can check us out on ultrabooknews.com, carrypad.com and umpcportal.com. Thanks for watching.